Well, my father is a trainer in our home country of Colombia. It was he who got me into boxing at a young age of only eight years old. Ever since then, I've been following the process of fighting in Bantam Division tournaments, junior tournaments, senior junior Olympic division tournaments, and even representing my home country, Colombia, in different tournaments. I was also a member of the Colombian Olympic boxing team, and after that, I turned professional. Coming to this country, it was a huge sacrifice to me. I had to leave my child behind. I had to leave my family, my friends. Everyone that I knew, I had to leave them behind. My father always told me that to become someone in life, you have to make sacrifices. All of my life, along with my brothers, who were also boxers, we dreamed of this opportunity. Ever since I can remember, we grew up with our father telling us that we always have to come to the United States and, and fight for Golden Boy promotions. And because of my sacrifice and blessings, my dream came true. I think all boxers have the same goal, and that is to one day be the main event. And what's bigger than being the main event for Golden Boy promotions at a LA Fight Club event? I feel very happy and I'm very proud of this accomplishment. At the moment, I'm undefeated with the record of 14 and 0. I feel like after two more fights, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be ready to contend for a world title and start writing my own story. And there you see him, uh, trained by Mr. Santa Cruz, Jose Santa Cruz, who's battling a, his own health issues right now. Yep. Great to see him here in that ring, training Oscar Negrete. Of course, the father of Leo Santa Cruz has a big fight coming up later on this month. It's a very good situation, training situation and promotional situation that Negrete has because he had the amateur background and he's got a, a, an excellent pro trainer and a promoter that's going to keep him busy. And here we go, fight fans, with our main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing this scheduled in the Bantamweight division. Presentada por Oscar de la Vez, Golden Boy Promotions, y patrocinado por Tecate Born Bold. Carmelita, pure coconut water. It's natural and pure coconut. Agua de coco puro de Carmelita es natural y puro coco. Y casa tequila, casa Mexico tequila, it's in the taste. And the motion picture, Hands of Stone, the true story of Roberto Duran, starring Edgar Ramirez, Robert, Robert De Niro, and Usher Raymond in theaters everywhere this August. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10-point bus system, Raul Caiz, Dr. Lou Moret, and Pat Russell. And when the bell rings and the action begins, your referee in charge and cargado de ring, referee Wayne Hedgepan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Ciudad de Los Angeles, dile al mundo, make some noise if you are ready! Presentando primero en la esquina azul, con los pantaloncillos plateados y un peso de 118 libras y un cuarto. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks, he weighed officially 118 and one quarter pounds. Su record, 11 victorias, 6 derrotas, 3 empates y 7 ganadas por knockout. His professional record stands in 11 victories, 6 defeats, 3 draws and 7 wins by way of knockout desde Ciudad Juan. Is Mexico presentando Jose Flash Bustos? <laughs> es opened in la esquina roja con los pantaloncillos blanco con rojo y un peso de 118 libras. His opponent across the ring, finding out of the red corner, wears white trimmed in red. He weighed it officially 118 pounds even. Su record perfecto con 14. Victorias, zero derrotas y cinco ganadas por knockout. He stands perfect as a professional in 14 bouts, 14 victories, no defeats, five wins coming by way of knockout desde Tierra Alta, Colombia. And now residing and fighting out of Los Angeles, California. Here is the undefeated Oscar El Jaguar Negrete. Let's go, second, let's go.
All right, gentlemen, you received your instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. We good here? Touch them up. Wayne Hedgepeth with the instructions. He said touch them up. Ten rounds in the Bantam weight division coming your way, Dougie. Bustos, at age 24, is four years younger. He is three inches taller, and he has a decided reach advantage. Oscar Negrete. Now living and training in Los Angeles. Originally from Tierra Alta, Cordoba, Colombia. He rep the Colombian national team for many years from a small town. He said in that town, probably about 10, maybe 12,000 people. Like, so are you the most famous person? He's like, yeah. He said, <laughs> but that's not saying much because everybody there is just a hard worker, blue collar. I'm the only one doing something that's not related in that town. Yeah, but he has a, a, a blue collar work ethic in his boxing training. Yeah, he's 14 and 0, five KOs, doesn't have that big power punch, but he will work you and grind you down. Is Oscar Negrete. Jose Bustos from Ciudad Mexico, Ciudad Juarez, Mexico on the El Paso border. He's 24 years old. Has won three fights in a row on knockouts. The name that he's fought, Lamont Roach Jr. Actually fought him at Madison Square Garden. And he took the young prospect the distance, and that was in the junior lightweight division. So he is more than a few weight classes lighter than that that, that fight against Roach. <laughs> in fact, I think this is the lightest he's ever fought in his career. The nickname Flash comes from the amateur days. And one fight, he was throwing so many punches that they said it just looked like a bunch of a Flash coming at you. That stuck with him. I'm like, wait a minute, you're Mexican, you're fighting deep in the heart of Mexico, and they give you a nickname in, in English? He's like, yeah. He goes, what am I going to do, fight it? <laughs> it's a good nickname. Yeah. But when you have a nickname like that, people are going to expect fast hands. Negrete, his dad was a boxer. One day, went into the closet, said, look, kids, I was a boxer. They didn't believe him. <laughs> so he brought out the gloves, and he trained all three brothers. Oscar, the only one going professional. This one's scheduled for 10 at the sold-out Velasco Theater, the LA Fight Club. Bustos is taller, he's rangier, he's the naturally bigger fighter. He's also somebody who likes to use a lot of lateral movement. So it'll be interesting to see how Negrete closes the distance and negates the height and reach advantages. Guys, despite the nickname, I, I think it's clear Negrete early on has better hand speed. He's simply beating Bustos to the punch here in round number one. And we take a look at the, uh, Beto, you mentioned this three bout winning streak for Bustos who comes into this fight on a little bit of a run. Has to be mentioned, though, that combined opponents' record were 4 and 14. So, again, guys, matchmaking matters. That, that is me setting you up <laughs> and you with the spike. We call that teamwork yeah. here on Ring TV Live. <laughs> 10 seconds ago in the opening round, it's scheduled for 10. Negrete Bustos on Ring TV Live in downtown Los Angeles. Golden Boy matchmaker Roberto Diaz sits down with the cameras and explains and gives us the background about their fighters. Here he is on Negrete. Obviously, he must miss everybody back home in Colombia, but he's doing it for a reason. He's fighting for them. He's fighting for Colombia. He's fighting for a lot of Mexicans that have adopted him. Uh, he's a fun fighter to watch. He doesn't have big punch power, but that makes it even more difficult because you got to win your fights based on condition, based on output you know, work twice as hard sometimes. And that's, that's Negrete. He's a kid that uh, will outwork you. It's gonna be a tough fight, as it should be. It's the main event. But it's gradually getting him into the 10 rounds. This will be his first 10 rounder. But not only that, I want him to start getting him ready because maybe a world title fight within the next two or three fights is not, you know, far-fetched. Second round coming your way. Negrete and Bustos. Bantamweight's a very interesting division, isn't it? 
it's, it's a division that is sometimes overlooked because it's sub featherweight, but it's a division where the top fighters and the top prospects always deliver because of their activity. You know, and generally, Doug, the talent pool is not as great as it is, let's say, between 135 and 160. If you're good enough, you will be put on the fast track. You necessarily don't need to have two dozen fights to fight for a world title. Now, especially somebody like Negrete with that amateur, he had more than, with his amateur background, he had more than uh, 200 amateur bouts. He fought a little bit on the international level. And he's, I think his progression, because of his age, he's, he's, he's mature, he's, he's 28. They don't have to take him in baby steps. Yeah. I think once he's used to fighting the 10 round distance, and once he really has developed his professional style, I think Robert Diaz can just roll the dice on him. You, you know, know, you look at the landscape now at 118, your belt holders, the BC is um, held by the very respected Japanese fighter Shinsuke Yamanaka. The WBA was recently won by Rashi Warren, and the IBF is held by Lee Haskins. You know, quite frankly, I don't see Jeff Chandler out there. I, I think right. there's some winnable guys or beatable guys. But again, I, I do think that the Negretti needs a little bit more seasoning. But I, within a year or two, I can absolutely see him if he develops the way we think he will at a steady progression to be fighting for a major belt. Yeah, I think timing is important. I think make sure that Negrete has his professional style, that he's at least gone a hard 10-round distance at least twice before you put him in there uh, in a 12-rounder with a title on st at stake. But who knows, uh, 18 months from now, uh, an excellent title holder like Yamanaka, he might be getting long in the tooth. Yeah. And again, we are dealing with bantamweights, and there's an old line of thought that 28 years old is very young for a heavyweight, but for a bantamweight, that considered not necessarily old, but certainly not young yeah, either. They, they typically burn out quicker. Negrete will say that he has that Mexican style. We, we hear a lot about Mexican style boxing, <laughs> uh, but he literally does because he left Colombia and he went to Mexico City. And there he hooked up with some trainers. He actually fought part of that World Series of Boxing. So he fought for the Guerreros of Mexico City. And then that's how he ended up in the United States. I think it's an excellent move. I think the last two Bantamweight champions from Colombia lived and trained in Southern California. Well, one I'm, of the I'm talking about Yanni Perez and yep. Eliezer Julio. Yeah. Jorge Eliezer Julio. And Steve, I know one of the guys that you and Doug both love is lighter in the lightweight, Chocolatito. Yeah. Oh, man. And by the way, Chocolatito could be coming back to L.A. September 10th at the Forum or the StubHub. So I have more news on that. There's a chance, guys, that a fight we saw April 15th, Soto Carras against Kamagai, could end up as the co-feature that night. We I call that a that. tease, and we'll talk about that <laughs> in the next round at the Blasco Theater. Negrete is cutting off the ring. He's closing a distance. He's pushing Bustos against the ropes. And when he has the Mexicans back to the ropes, he outworks them. As you said, Steve, he has the quicker hands and he is beating him to the punch. Working the body and those overhand rights. You know, and another thing that he's doing very well, he's punching at his distance. Bustos is the guy with the longer length of your arms. So you got to punch kind of inside. Your feet have got to be at a certain position. And it'll also give you safety defensively. And I think Negrete's done a very nice job of that throughout the first two rounds. Yeah, he knows when to let his hands go. Does it right after yeah. he'll slip a jab. Yeah. Take a step forward and then fire him. Third round of action. Oscar Negrete, Jose Busto. Negrete has that Colombia flag around his waist. Busto's with the silver trunks with that green. Bustos is not looking very flashy right now. No, 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 no. First Negrete is starting to come on a bit here. More activity from the Colombian fighter. Negrete wants to put on a show. He wants to make a statement. This needs is a, to. This is, he does, he needs to. Um, and he wants to because he doesn't take this for granted, this opportunity of being in the main event, being in his first 10 round. He's worked his way to get here. He's, he, he, First signed with Golden Boy Promotions, he was fighting on the non-televised undercards at Fantasy Springs, and then here at the Blasco Theater from the opening television uh, televised bout to the co-feature, and now finally in the main event. 
and he wants to show Oscar De La Hoya that he's worthy of main event status and moving forward. One of his favorites growing up, Oscar De La Hoya, also Julio Cesar Chavez. And Steve, let's pay off that tease, as they say in radio. Well, September 10th, forum? September 10th, I wrote about this today on UCN Live, either at the Forum or the StubHub Center, or maybe even Las Vegas, depending on the finances. But it looks like Chocolatito is going to fight Carlos Cuadras, the WBC 115-pound oh. titleist. That's a good fight. And Soto Cross Kamagai, the rematch, Robert Diaz had told me earlier in the week, as Negrete just keeps going to work here, that they were planning on putting that on the Canelo undercard, but they think that fight might fight fit better as a co-feature on HBO. And also on that night, Beto, we might have a split-site doubleheader. I do believe that Golovkin Eubank, I think it's very close to being consummated, signed, sealed, and delivered. And they would have that in England in the afternoon, and then Chocolatito Cuadras and Kamagai and Soto Carras later at night. That is a hell of a card if they could put that together. One more time, that's a one lot more time. Action. Yes. In the afternoon. You'd have Golovkin Eubank from England, and then you'd have a card, hopefully in L.A., maybe at the Forum or the StubHub Center, Cuadras against Chocolatito Ooh. for his VC 15-pound title, and then Soto Carras and Kamagai. Rematch. Who are like the Jeffersons. They're moving on up from the Velasco <laughs> Theater to maybe to the Forum. More stuff. As up. they should. Get that tailgate ready to go at the forum. Oscar Negrete in the white trunks. Oh, he's in his rhythm and he's having yes, he fun is. now. I mean, he's. El Jaguar, the Jaguar. He's That's elusive, but he's also the aggressor. One upstairs. Nicely. I like the way he mixes his punches up to the body and the head. Bustos gets tagged with the right. He's just Body starting, to, work. Just starting to break him down, guys, slowly. This is what Negrete needed to do. His last couple fights have been pedestrian, workmanlike. Workmanlike doesn't get you to main event. <laughs> Left to the body, right to the body. Partially blocks an uppercut from Bustos, punishes him with an overhand right. It wobbled the Mexican back on his heels. And here on the inside, Bustos can't really hang with the uh, the punch selection and the quickness of Oscar Negrete. And we've spoken about this before. Boxing is oftentimes not just a sporting event, but a beauty contest. And it's not if you win, it's how you win. I mean, think about it. Guillermo Rigondeau, one of the belt holders at 112, 115. He's top five pound for pound on everybody's list, but who wants to watch him fight? But the way he fights, he's yeah. now exiled to England, Japan, Venus and Mars. But and fighting, he, yeah, and fighting like once a year. Right, but he does not have a home on premium cable where the big money is in the United States. Uh, if Negrete wants to create a buzz for himself and be on the fast track to a title, the way he wins tonight will have a direct correlation to how Robert Diaz will handle this career. Yeah, and he's already got to sort of fight against the, the stigma of being a lighter weight fighter. Right. It's tougher for a Bantamweight to get attention than a welterweight with the same level of, of, of talent. And Negrete coming out loading up on his punches here. Hey, and another factor is he's not Mexican, although I think right. he's building a bit of a base. Colombians, basically, that have had success in our country at the world-class level, there's no doubt they have to be able to fight legitimately. And they have to be entertained. Yes. Can't be a stinker. When you go and say Colombian, the fighters' names that come up? Well, Johnny Perez was, was an entertaining guy. So was Joe, uh, Jorge Alicia Julio. When yeah. he had his legs, he was a very good right-handed puncher. Yeah, and he fought guys like Junior Jones, Johnny Giant Tapia. Tapia. Happy. Anytime you get late. Johnny Tapia on a broadcast, I'm happy. Yeah, late in his career against Israel Vasquez and, and here's Manny a, Pacquiao. Here's a trivia question. Yeah, he was actually the opponent for Manny Pacquiao on the Lennox Lewis Mike, Mike Tyson, Tyson pay per view in Memphis, Tennessee. That was in Memphis. That's right. That's the right. pyramid. 2002. How times have changed. <laughs> Yeah, not going to Memphis anymore. No. <laughs> I'll say this, though, guys. I, I think Negrete is really fighting with the purpose tonight. You can just see it. He really yep. wants to put a hurting on Bustos. I, I wanted to see that because although he got the W um, in his last fight in March, he was in, a guy, in with the guy who, though undefeated, but just not on his level. He was in there with a very inexperienced green kid from Tijuana. And I expected yeah. him to get the, at least a TKO. Yeah. That kid and wanted to survive. Yeah. Right. No, and, he did. But Negrete wasn't able to, to close the show and I made a mental note of that. It left you wanting more in the last couple of fights. You see the flashes of it. Right. Of Negrete. It left from Negrete. 
But I thought to myself, listen, if you want to be a top 10 contender, if you want to one day fight for a, a world title, and sooner rather than later, later, you get rid of kids like this. I think tonight he is really making a concerted effort to that body, especially here in round number four, just digging with both hands downstairs to boost those. There's some blood on the head of Negrete. Don't know if that's coming from him or if it's from Bustos. There, there might have been a clash. Yes, yeah, on the hairline of Negrete. Once again, thanks to everybody watching us and supporting us on Ring TV Live, the one year anniversary. Great job by Will Wright, David and Scott Tatro, the vision of Oscar DeLoya to bring you all of Golden Boy fights. There might Appreciate be a cut. everybody who's been there since day one, even the ones who joined us later on, Luis Gonzalez. Does a great job. Yeah, it looks like there's a cut maybe uh, on the hairline of Negrete. Yep. I can see it in there through the hair. Maybe way high up there. Maybe he came in with the top of his head and maybe hit the mouthpiece or teeth of Bustos and opened up a cut. Doesn't seem to be a problem, though. It's not dripping into his eyes. Cuffing right to the ear of Busto, landed by Negrete. You can see that blood trickling down from the hairline. It's not bothering him. He's still throwing punches and landing, backing Bustos up to the ropes. Landing a nice, compact left hook on the inside. And stepping out yeah. fr from a distance and seeing everything that Bustos fires his way. Negrete has very good eyes in this match. Beto, one other news and note here related to September 17th in regards to the Canelo Alvarez Liam Smith undercard. I believe Louis Ortiz, the heavyweight WBA interim title, Robert Diaz says that's the plan to get him on that card against Alexander Ustinov. And I'm also told that Antonio Orozco, should he come out clean July 30th, there's a shot he might also be on that bill. And it'll be really interesting to see who they match Antonio yeah. Orozco with. King Kong boxing, huh? The Southpaw Cuban. the best heavyweights in the game. We're watching Oscar Negrete in the white trunks taking on Jose Bustos. Bustos was in the corner. He's having trouble breathing. It's hot and steamy inside the Belasco Theater. They were trying to get him some air. They did that old Mexican trick of fanning him, <laughs> trying to get that helicopter with the towel. The commission right away stepped in, and California, I guess they don't allow that. Really? Yeah, really? Yeah, they were trying to do it right in front of him. They, they wouldn't let it. I wonder why. And Bustos kind of rolled his head back, like, like trying to take a deep breath. Well, I certainly think some of the air has been taken out of the balloon of Bustos. The one thing about Negrete today has been a really concerted attack to the body. As again, he digs another left hook right to the gut of Bustos. And I would expect nothing less from a Santa Cruz trained <laughs> and managed fighter. Well, the same man, Aguanta, which means he can take it. That is Bustos. He's in there to do work. Throw up on the border, see Val Juarez right across from El Paso. He's talking now, Bustos. Yeah. A little yeah. smirk. Yeah, they're both smirking at each other. Stop smirking, start punching. Like that. <laughs> and there is a cut on the outside uh, of the left eye yep. of Negrete. Is that from and a it's puncher? Now. Is that puncher? Was that a. It looks like a headbutt gash, but and it's going to be up to, to Wayne Hedgepeth to, to make that de determination. That's a tough break if that cut gets any worse. I'm gonna have to cut on that left eyebrow. Still controlling this fight. Less than a minute to go in the fifth round, scheduled for 10. Thank you for joining us on Ring TV. Bethel Durant, Doug Fisher, and Steve Kim. Of course, the editor of ringtv.com, Steve, UCN Live, and Boxing Team. What's those videos you guys have been doing? Uh, the 10 the count. 10 count. Uh, we get to do those we every month. Fun. We have a lot of fun, just roundtable discussion. I saw the one with Larry Merchant, which is fantastic. And then there was a guy who stepped in this week who just had like a shirt with all arms. 
That, that's Michael Montero. <laughs> My goodness. Montero on boxing, one of the most knowledgeable guys out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't get past the, the face because all I saw were, were guns coming out of that shirt. Hey, sun's out, guns out. My goodness. Good for you, Mike. Keep, keep the good work. <laughs> 10 seconds to go in the fifth round. It is scheduled for 10. Oscar Negrete, we go back to that corner. We're going to try to work on that gash on his left eyebrow. We just discovered tahini. Its unique all-natural blend of lime, mild chili pepper, and sea salt adds a zing to everything. Like apples. Of which there are more than 7,500 varieties. Now she even enjoys her vegetables. vegetables. Did you know the U.S. produces 40% of the world's corn? It takes everything from ordinary to extraordinary. Watermelon, avocado, broccoli, pineapples, which, which are hundreds of fruitlets fused together. Nice. Find tahine in the produce section. Add a zing with tahine. Go on, then, boy. Boxing brought to you by Tajin. You know what you're doing. Ah. You know what it is. Steve Kim, what do you do with your Tajin? Well, what you do is you go to your local fruit stand in East L.A., and you get the whole fruit cup. It's about $5. And you say to the guy, Jose, give me some lime and give me some Tajin. Chile, sal, Tajin, as I, as I like to say, support your local frutero. That's called the East L.A. Vegan Special, <laughs> guys. And it's called Southern California <laughs> yeah. Special. You ever put some tahini around somebody who's never seen it? What are you doing to that fruit? I'm making it good, buddy. That's what they do in the valley, East L.A. Oh, that is a nasty gash on the left eyebrow of Oscar Negrete. His corner just not work, but right away, it opens up here in the sixth round. There's no indication from Wayne Henchman that it was a headbutt. So we roll on here in the sixth round. There's a fight controlled by Negrete. He seems a little reluctant to get on the inside uh, yeah. than he was in the opening rounds of this bout. And I think he's leery of the head of Bustos. He's afraid of more headbutts, opening up more gashes. Well, you'd figure, Doug, after five rounds, we're halfway through here. He's built up a sizable lead. I have it a shutout, so, so do I. all Negrete has to do is win another round or two. And you think strategically, if he does have some apprehension about that cut, basically box relatively safely from the outside, and he should have his hand raised in victory. But then there's the conundrum. Yeah. Does he just coast to a victory right. to a pedestrian 10-round yeah. unanimous decision win? Or does he make that statement that he wants and, yeah. quite frankly, he probably needs for his career? Yes. Who else is out there at that 118? That's on his... That he, that's next for him. I mean, I'm not saying the Haskins are... The right, guys. somebody better than a Bustos, not yet, you know, a, a, a world, you know, not a world champion or even a, a necessarily a top 10 contender, but sort of a fringe contender. I gotta think about that. Caballero was at 118. He, he was. moved up. And then, you know, yeah, Payano was a rough guy. Yeah. You know? Just lost the WBA title to in, uh, Roshi Warren. You know, in general, though, these lower weight classes are not that deep. That's why a guy like Roman Gonzalez, it doesn't take him all that much time to clean out a division or have three or four title belts right. as he moves up in weight relatively quickly, although he's had 43, 44 fights. But you see a lot of these tie fighters at the lower weight classes. Doug, they literally, uh, within eight, nine fights, will have a title yeah, under their belt. And those so, are guys who usually yeah. had full careers as Muay Thai kickboxers, and so the transition wasn't that hard. There's some good uh, English fighters at Bantamweight. Yeah. I don't think he's ready for this particular fighter because he's a former title holder. He's the guy that uh, Randy Caballero beat for the IBF title, but Stuart Hall. Stuart Hall? Yeah. Yeah, maybe in three fights or so, maybe Negrete would be ready. And that'd be a hell of a fight. Oh, Hulk Jamie McDonald, I think, is a bantamweight. Yeah, he's, he's a title holder, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Maybe he's the WBA regular title holder. Now I see what Roberto talking about. He could get to that level quickly. It's a very interesting weight class. And as I recall, Randy Caballero, he basically went from being a prospect to a, you know, a top yeah. 10 contender and a world title holder in just two fights. He had to go to Japan for an eliminator, right. then he beat Stewie Hall in Monaco. I, I wish traffic moved that fast <laughs> in reality. It doesn't, people. Beautiful skyline, though, downtown Los Angeles. And that song you're hearing from DJ Ray is La Chona. I like it.
seeing a lot of uh, Vaseline applied to the face of Oscar Negrete. Can't tell who the uh, who the cut man is. Um, Sergio Estrada. He's got his work cut out for him. You have to say, let's go. He Come beckons. Here. He beckons to him. All right. Well, what are you going to do when you're beckoning here yeah. in the seventh round? He beckons Bustos. He says, bring it, young man. Oh, good right. Is that what you wanted? Okay. Heaviest shot of the night landed early here in the seventh by Negrete. Negrete's early good work was done on the inside, particularly to the body. Maybe over the second half, he can do some good work from the outside. Straight right hands like that one. You know, the other reality, being a Colombian Bantamweight, is that most likely, if you look at where these belts are situated in Japan and in England, like a Randy Caballero, he may have to travel overseas to actually win a belt. Yeah, he'll have to dust off his passport. I think he's willing to do that. I mean, that's where the money is, too. Colombia, Mexico, L.A. He's, he's traveling. Boosters has traveled. Wayne jumps in there, says, keep the hands up. Yeah, Bustos has traveled, but he's never won outside of Mexico. No, the bulk of his success has been in his home country after making his pro debut in 2011. You know, prior to his uh, recent winning streak here, the prior four bouts was all, were all losses, but really good names. Lamont Roach, Dennis Galarza, Christopher Diaz out of Puerto Rico, and Frankie D'Alba. They had a combined mark of 39-2-1. and one. So generally, it takes a pretty solid prize fighter to beat him. And he was fighting from the featherweight division yeah. to the lightweight division, yeah. from 126 pounds to 135. So much bigger guys than Oscar Negrete. Body work from Negrete. Big soccer fan. Los Jaguares de Cordoba is the nickname of the soccer team from his hometown. That's why he also has that nickname, El Jaguar. Jaguar. See it across his trunks. A shot at a time. Trained by Jose Santa Cruz, Leo's father. By the way, Santa Cruz has a very, very good fight coming up July 30th from the Barclays Center against Carl Frampton. I, I think that's going to be an excellent matchup. Who do you well, like in that fight? You know, I like Santa Cruz. I, I, unlike Scott Quigg, who waited seven rounds and <laughs> yeah. put his punches on layaway, uh, I, I think Leo Santa Cruz is going to come right out of the gate. And I get the sense, looking at Leo Santa Cruz at 26, he is now comfortably fitting in as a featherweight. Uh, I think, Doug, he's simply too big and rangy for Frampton. And maybe too busy. Yeah. Too much pressure. Right hand from Negrete. Final seconds of the seventh round. It's scheduled for 10. One-two combination, uh, but a missed left hook from Oscar Negrete. Lands another one-two combination. Not with the same stick that he was landing at during the first four or five rounds of this bout. But he's still landing more punches than Bustos is landing on him. And by the way, guys, checking the Twitter timeline, our special correspondent, Rian, points out to us that Hall and Haskins are fighting next. That's a good fight. That's a very good fight. I like it. I think I favor Hall in that fight. Hmm. I, think I, 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 I yeah. favor Stewie. Hmm. Not sure. I like Stewart. <laughs> Thought he acquitted himself very well in that loss to uh, Caballero. Eighth round, it's scheduled for 10. Oscar Negrete has controlled this fight. The fighter from Colombia. Who's 
Bristow's landing one of his own, finally. Doing work. Got a rise out of his corner. Yep. Negrete is rolling, running around, tripped on his own feet. Finally, some pressure being brought by Bustos. Right landed by Bustos. Negrete pushes him. Negrete, the last couple of rounds, has been telling Bustos to bring it. Well, here he is. What are you going to do about it? Well, Beto, with Negrete putting his foot off the gas pedal a little bit, boxing a little bit more cautiously, perhaps because of that cut, it actually allows Bustos to kind of breathe a little easier and actually come forward. And just look at this. He is the bigger guy. Yeah, he's a naturally bigger guy, and maybe he got a little uh, second wind while Negrete took his foot off the gas pedal in the middle rounds. I'm glad somebody's bringing it, though, because the fight had, had sort of lulled yeah. into this... Which Stasis. isn't the Belasco way. It is not the Belasco way. Oh! Dislodged mouthpiece from Negrete. There it is. Wonder who made his mouthpiece because it, it, it went out quick. This is a good round from Bustos. Yes, the best round of the fight so far, and it goes to Bustos. Oscar has his cheering session. He's, he's acknowledging the crowd a lot. Yes, he, he really is. I think he needs to co concentrate a little bit more on Bustos. But that gash um, on the outside of his left eye is pretty nasty. And it's swelling a little yeah. bit now, too. Doesn't appear to be affecting his vision at all, though. seconds to go in the eighth round. Easily the best round of the night for Jose Flash Bustos from Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. They're going to have to come back, landing a body shot. And Bustos can't afford to take his foot off the gas pedal because this round that he was winning could be stolen by Negrete if, if Negrete closes hard enough in these final 30 seconds. Jose has a slip. If you're at home watching this fight with the two girls, make sure you use a tajin like my brother Gabriel's doing in Long Beach, watching it in his garage. Final 10 seconds of the round. It's been all Oscar and Negrete, but this one was Bustos. We just discovered tajin. Its unique all-natural blend of lime, mild chili pepper, and sea salt adds a zing to everything, like apples of which there are more than 7,500 varieties. Now she even enjoys her vegetables. vegetables. Did you know the U.S. produces 40% of the world's corn? It takes everything from ordinary to extraordinary. Watermelon, avocado, broccoli, pineapples, which, which are hundreds of fruitlets fused together. Nice. Find tahin in the produce section. Add a zing with tahin. <sighs> There he is, Oscar Negrete, Cordoba, Colombia, now living in Los Angeles. Our main event tonight, he's taking on Jose Bustos. Ninth round, it's scheduled for 10. Steve, a fight I gotta ask about. In your news and notes, a man who started off his career very light, because we got the light, light guys in here at 118 Bantamweights, Manny Pacquiao. Is there talk of him actually coming back? Yes, th there absolutely is. In fact, Eric Gomez uh, basically broke the story for me last week on Boxing Scene. October 15th, top ranked Bob Arum. They have put a hold uh, with the MGM properties, and their preference is the Mandalay Bay. And believe it or not, they want to have a problem. Adrian Broner, uh, my understanding is they've actually had serious discussions and it has gone somewhere. Now, that doesn't mean the fight is done, but I've talked to people at HBO and they're even saying, yes, we are in our own way planning eventually for an Oscar, excuse me, Manny Pacquiao return. I have a hard time believing, guys, that Manny Pacquiao 
who has two fights left with this huge minimum with Bob Arum, Doug, is going to leave that money on no, the table. Nobody yeah. does. It, it, yeah, but it seldom uh, happens. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I don't have a problem. With I like problem. that fight. If, if Manny's going to come back, I want to see him in there with a new face. Right. You know what? I, I don't want Marquez 5. I certainly don't want <laughs> Timothy Bradley 4. You don't oh, want I definitely don't want Mayweather 2. Well, you're not a fan of Police Academy, obviously, no, I'm not. I, don't, I don't like sequels. <laughs> Except for Aliens. That was good. But Pacquiao versus Broner, it's something new. It's fun. It's, it's, it's a, a new fun mix. fight. The promotion for that fight alone. There you go. It would actually make 24-7 worth watching again. I can't quit the problem. I'll be you honest love, with you. You love him, I, don't you? I, I, I am amused by that young man from Cincinnati. Amused would be a good word. <laughs> Your band camp jacket is in the mail. <laughs> and guys, you see in this round here, Negretti just getting right back to the grindstone. He's starting to back up Bustos again a little bit more. And again, sometimes your best defense is your offense. And when he laid off the gas pedal a little bit, he got touched. He got touched. You saw what happened. He gave Bustos a little bit of confidence to come forward. And you saw what happened in round number eight. He's back to putting his punches together again, whether he's on the outside, mid distance, or in close. Negrete in the white trunks. So you see the Colombia color around his waist. Good right from Negrete. Bustos had one round. That was the eighth. I scored it for him. Other than that, though, hasn't much, seen much from the fighter from Ciudad Juarez. And this is what you're going to get with Oscar Negrete. Mark the light in there. A you, get a lot of, you get a lot of punches. You get a wide variety of punches. A little bit of footwork. Not a lot of punching power. And Beto, going back to Manny Pacquiao, I, I am with Doug. If a return is inevitable, and there's nothing we can do to stop it, all right, I, I want to see him fight new faces. Like, listen, last week we had a very good welterweight fight between Keith Thurman and Sean Porter. Those are two young guys who I think raised their stock with a very good fight. Again, I don't think it's the fight of the year, but I think they earned something bigger. Now, if you said to me Manny Pacquiao, Keith Thurman, oh, or wow. Danny Garcia, or anything of that ilk, I'll check uh, it out. I, I would not be opposed to those type of matchups. As we watch Negrete in action here. Controlling the distance, just stepping in with quick one-two combinations. Not really putting his back into these shots. He's just scoring points right now, Steve. Doug, what I'd like to see as we move forward with Negrete, and I think we're at that point very soon. Uh, you're at the, he's at the stage of his career where he's facing guys he can beat. And I think they capitulate mentally. So it becomes a situation where Negrete is dancing by himself. Yes. I want to see him against a better or bigger offensive threat or punchers. And how does he react to that right. type of heat? I, I want to see how he reacts when somebody's putting it on him. Right, exactly. Every round, round after round, going into late rounds. Tenth and final round. This is our tenth fight of the night. Called all of them. Started with the LAPD against NYPD. Seven amateur fights, great cause. Proceeds going to the Susan G. Komen Cancer Research for Breast Cancer. Oscar De Loya, charity very close to his heart. His mother, Cecilia, passed away in 1991. Cecilia De Loya, the wing at the White Memorial Hospital. The great night, charity on the 4th of July weekend. This is the 10th and final round between Oscar Negrete and Jose Bustos. It's been all Negrete in this fight. He's undefeated 14-0. Never in danger. A cut on the left eyebrow. I was taken care of very nicely by his corner. But the question is, he does come away with the win. What's next for him? Well, I know one thing that's going to be next for him for sure is probably about a 90-day suspension with the cut. So that's going to slow down his progress. But you see what's happening here in rounds 9 and 10. Just by stepping forward again, he regains tactical control of this fight that he lost a little bit in round number 8. Beto said something about this fight and about Negrete. Never in danger. It made me think about the five or six consecutive fights that we've called of Negrete's. I've never seen him hurt. Right. I want to see him in there with somebody who has the physical strength and right. punching power to hurt this little guy. And he, I want to see how he reacts. He's never, I, I went back and looked at some of the fights that we've done. And to his credit, he's never been in there where he's mixed it up and you had that flash and going back and forth, the exchange that you get those flurries. Never seen that. 
where he'll, he'll be the one initiating two, three, four punches at a time, and then he, the other guy can't keep up with him. Yeah. No, and, and when you get consistent, steady work with the windmill, like Leo Santa Cruz, yeah. I, I guarantee you there's no one he's faced yet facing live bullets that can match that type of pace. That's right. But maybe he can take it. Maybe right. he can take the heat. But I just haven't seen him in the kitchen yet. Yeah. And I think that's the challenge for Robert Diaz, Golden Boy's matchmaker, going forward. Is find that right foe that can not only help him advance his career and step up to that real contender status, but also give us a really compelling fight. Right, and if you don't have that natural God-given eraser where you could start guys with one shot. And he don't have it. And he really that doesn't we have know. it. But sometimes it does take a dance partner to make entertaining fights. Yeah. It does take two to tango. It does. Ten seconds to go in the fight. Oscar Negrete, Jose Bustos. The one-year anniversary of Ring TV Live at the sold-out Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. They go the distance, a little bit of showmanship at the end, and we'll be back with the decision from Oscar Negrete and Jose Bustos. You're watching LA Fight Club on Ring TV Live. Let's look at highlights of this 10-rounder, the first 10-rounder of Oscar Negrete's career. He started fast. Beating Bustos to the punch, really mixing it up on the inside, attacking the body, and then attacking the head, pushing Bustos back to the ropes. Really just out hustling him, but doing uh, doing so uh, technically, in a technically proficient manner. I thought the first four rounds were very, very impressive. I thought it created a nice, solid, fast tempo. And you see the blood right. on the forehead, and then later there was the gash on the outside of the left eye. It took some steam out of his momentum and his punches. Bustos had his moments, which we saw there. That was round eight, where uh, Negrete was, was reeling backwards and had his mouthpiece dislodged. That was the only round I scored for Bustos. So I had a nine rounds to one for Negrete, 99-91 for the unbeaten fighter from Colombia. And I had a 98-92. And Doug, uh, the way I would describe this night's work for Negrete, who I believe will have his hand raised in victory, is solid, but not spectacular. Oscar Negrete, there you go. Give him a quote to Cecilia, director of PR for Golden Boy. Got to get this quote right away, especially if you're on deadline. Oh, Jose Santa Cruz, trainer. We see Busto's side. You know, guys, I think Negrete's at that stage. We know that he can go long distances. I want to see if he can race. That means actually be pushed. Yes. It's one thing to jog at your own steady pace. What happens when there's a guy going stride for right. stride with you? I mean, yeah, either on your on right. your ass or is right. leading you. Puntos, here are the points tonight. Dr. Lou Moret anotó 100 a 90. Y los jueces Caiz y Russell anotaron el mismo 99, 91, 99-91 for Russell and Caiz, your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, El Jaguar, Oscar Negrete. Undefeated, still Oscar Negrete. He's now 15. Went the distance, did the work. And as we spoke about earlier, guys, with a cut like that nowadays with the commission, when you get knocked out or right. cut, 60 days, no 60 contact, to 90, the gym. something like that. Yeah. So. Boxing at the sold-out Belasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. It started with the LAPD against the New York Police Department. 
And then, then after that, the pros came in. Nico Valdez, guys, put on a good show. Oh, Kid Charisma. Kid Charisma <laughs> doing bad. what he does best. And I tell you one thing, he's got a lot of ability. Let's see if he can polish up some of the other rough edges coming into the next few months. He is now 2-0, and oh, a third-round stoppage for Nico. Then Emilio Sanchez took on tough veteran Hugo Partida. Sanchez got the eight-round decision and looked really good in his step-up fight against a veteran opponent in Partida. I thought he had the performance of the night, and I think with this eight-round victory, he went from being kind of an unknown 12-0 prospect to a very advanced 13-0 yeah. prospect. And then our main event was Oscar Negrete. He went the distance, controlled it from the opening bout against Jose Bustos. For David and Scott Tatrell, Will Wright, Oscar DeLoya, and my partners, Steve Kim and Doug Fisher, I'm Beth Durant saying good night from Los Angeles.